Hello everyone! Welcome back for another video with me, Adrienne Lee, the Wandering Art Historian. I'm so glad you could join me for more discussions on art. Um, as you know, our new web series is a closer look at famous paintings, and this video is dedicated to the group portraits of the golden age of Dutch Baroque painting. I wanted to highlight a, a few for you today so that you could get an idea of what to look for if you want to keep researching this really interesting topic. I think it is fascinating. For example, we're going to talk about these three Im images today. Um, just as a little bit of background, a group portrait can kind of seem kind of boring. You, you, Think about like a school portrait where you have the whole class and everyone's lined up perfectly and everyone's looking in the same direction and their arms are, it gets kind of dull and it's, you kind of lose some of the individuality of the different students because everyone looks the same because of their arrangement and composition, right? However, during the golden age of Dutch Baroque painting, that gets, that idea gets tossed out the window these artists decided they were going to make group portraits that were interesting, fun to look at, full of dynamic movement and activity, and that's one reason why these group portraits stand out among the rest, okay? Um, so what's going on at this time period? Well, we know the Baroque period comes after the Renaissance, so think 1600s, okay? The Dutch at this time, very religious, strict Calvinists, okay? They're supposed to shun ostentatiousness, which seems contradictory to the idea of painting very dynamic group portraits, doesn't it? Mm. Yes, it does. Um, plus, there were a lot of portrait conventions at this time for centuries. Um, it was a, a convention that you had to pose a certain way, wear certain clothes and hold certain objects in your portrait so that the people who looked at your portrait would know your station in life, your job, uh, how much money you had, and all of that starts to get chucked out the window during this time, okay? These, these artists start playing around with these conventions a little bit, okay? And that's because at this time, the Dutch middle class is booming there is money flowing, and that makes art accessible to more people. It's not just for the very few at the top, the ultra-rich or courtly people. The middle class can now afford to commission portraits, and their groups want to commemorate their existence, or they want to commemorate a special event that they all experienced together, okay? Um, what's very cool with these particular um, paintings that you will soon see is that um, not only does it celebrate the group, but these artists have found a way to kind of highlight the individuals within that group. How awesome is that? The main painting I want to talk about today is this one. Commonly known as the Night Watch, its proper title is this Civic Guardsman of District 2 under the command of Captain Franz Bannock Cook. And I include that because that is the title used by the Rijksmuseum in the Netherlands where it resides. Um, it's painted by our dear friend Rembrandt, who lived 1606 to 1669. It was painted in 1642, and it is currently undergoing an epic public conservation in the museum's gallery space. And because of this conservation, um, we're realizing that the Night Watch is a, a big misnomer, if you will. Um, we called it the Night Watch for so long because it feels very dark, almost like these activities are taking place at night. However, it's only dark like this because of age and dirt, okay? As they're conserving this painting and cleaning off the grime, it's turning out to be a much brighter composition. So that's gonna be amazing. What's going on here? So here we have our company. 
Um, and it looks like they're getting ready for an event. They're preparing their weapons. Uh, they're getting their flags and banners and even a drum ready. But do you notice no one is sitting perfectly? No one is perfectly posed? No one's looking all in the... We have a, a kind of a jumble of people. And because of that, you can kind of pick out each individual in this group. Do you also notice it feels like there's a lot of movement? Rembrandt is so good at doing this. Do you notice that he's included all of these diagonal lines? Uh, whether it's a flag or a rifle or this gentleman's cane, all these diagonal lines help create this sense of urgency in this particular painting. Um, now, I know you're also noticing something that's kind of weird in this particular painting. Do you notice this little girl? What? what what's this little girl doing hanging out with this company of men? Do you also notice that she has a chicken tied to her bill? Art historians believe that this figure was included because she was a sort of mascot for this company of soldiers. It's weird, I know, but what are you gonna do? It's Rembrandt, right? Let me give you another example of what Rembrandt does with group portraiture. Here we have the anatomy lesson of Dr. Nicholas Tulp, also by Rembrandt, as I said, from 1632, so 10 years prior, to the Night Watch. And I think this is such a cool composition because do you notice we've got all of the students clustered off to the left here and look at how they're so fascinated by their teacher. And this is Dr. Tulp, an actual doctor. And the, and the students are enthralled with what he says. Doesn't he look so distinguished with his hat and his uh, cloak and collar and his cuffs so elegant. Now what's really cool about this particular painting is that it gives Rembrandt the opportunity to show off his skill a little bit. Do you notice that the corpse here has been foreshortened a little bit? The perspective is a little uh, tweaked. And do you notice that he's included the actual muscles and tendons in this corpse's arm? Yeah, right? This is a very cool way for Rembrandt to kind of acknowledge and pay homage to the Italian Renaissance artists who came before him because as we know, they would go to morgues and attend anatomy lessons so that they could learn how to depict the human body as accurately as possible. And why is that so important for Rembrandt? This, this is no joke. Rembrandt painted this when he was only 26 years old. So pretty early in his career. Gotta say, good job Rembrandt. And what's so extra special about this particular group portrait is that it's depicting an actual anatomy lesson between this doctor and these students as suggested by this proclamation hung on the wall back here, including the date. 1632. This is a real event that happened. How awesome. Let me show you one more just to con kind of contrast with what Rembrandt did, okay? Here we have an epic group portrait by Franz Hals during the same time period, the golden age of Dutch Baroque painting, and here he is depicting the officers of the St. Hadrian Militia Company in 1633, obviously painted 1633. Um, now, what's very cool about this, while everyone seems to be on the same level, do you notice that all of the heads of the figures are kind of on the same line? No one's looking in the same direction. It's almost like the artist has interrupted them during an important meeting and caught some of them off guard. Some of them aren't paying him any attention. Some are already posing, some are distracted. And if you take a second to look at these individual faces, you might get the feeling that this is kind of a wild bunch of dudes, okay? First of all, it, while despite the fact that they're not moving a whole lot, it still feels like there's a lot of movement in this painting. And it's a similar convention to what Rembrandt did 
with these diagonal lines. Do you see all these diagonal lines? Yes, awesome, very cool. And what's so great about Franz Halls is him capturing their personalities because they were a wild bunch of dudes, okay? So this company of soldiers, um, they were a civic militia group and they claimed that they had helped liberate the Dutch Republic from Spain. Now that's a pretty lofty claim, but they believed that they helped, okay? And what they would do to kind of celebrate themselves is they would meet on their saint's feast day, Saint Hadrian, um, in dress uniform and have a grand banquet. Now that seems fine, you know, you meet on your saint's feast day and you have a party, that sounds great. However, it wasn't just a banquet, it was a day-long party and it wasn't just one day. These dudes would get so out of control that their celebration would last for a week and they would gorge themselves on food and alcohol. It got so out of control that their town established an ordinance limiting their annual celebration to quote, three or at most four days. And Franz Halls definitely gives us clues that these guys are a bunch of wild sons of guns, right? I love that about group portraiture during the golden age of Dutch Baroque painting. Don't you? Of course. Thank you so much for tuning in for another video. If you have a dollar or two that you could toss into my virtual tip jar, that would be awesome. If not, be sure to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time. Bye.